Customer experience best practices apply to any software. So we're going to set up fresh tests today according to this list I've compiled in a decade of experience of working as a customer experience expert. I've perfected this through 330 projects and you can see some of my clients. I'm setting up an example for a retail company with chat and email support. In this video, you're going to learn how to set up fresh tests. You're going to learn customer experience best practices. This to have increased customer satisfaction, productivity for your team and reduce churn. Let's go. Create a department for each team that is going to work in Freshdesk. I'm going to go to admin. I'll look for groups, then new group. I'll create order group, create agents. I'm going to select Dominic, myself and Bob add to group. And there you have it. And why is this important to you? It's because you need to have your teams well defined for who is going to work in Freshdesk. You won't be able to assign tickets if you don't have your teams defined in a granular fashion according to the processes in your business. Create a queue or a view for each of these teams. I'm going to go to my right hand side where I have groups. I'm going to select order group that I just created. I'm going to leave it with created within the last 30 days. Apply. My tickets are being shown. And what I do now is I save this view as and I call it order group view. It's going to be agents in this group and the group is going to be order group save. And now I'll be able to see it here in my list of views and we're done. And now repeat for all of the other groups that you've created. Why this matters? Well, this is a good way for you to filter tickets and keep your team organized. It will increase your productivity and the benefit to your customers is that they will get the request being handled faster because your agents are more productive. Quick pause moments. I'm going to assume you've collected all your business requirements, which I'm going to show here. You don't go around setting up softwares without any deep dive into your business requirements. Why do you need the software? Create a custom field and name it request type. I'm going to go to admin. I'm going to look for ticket fields. I'm going to create a dropdown. I am going to call this type of requests. I'm going to put some options in here. I'm going to put billing, order, tech, finance, general question and other. For the behavior of agents, I'm going to require when closing the tickets, I'm going to leave for the customer as it is. I'm going to save this up. Okay, and now if I go to one of my tickets, I'm going to see it up here, type of request. So I'm just going to put this as order update and I'm done. Why is this beneficial for you? Well, again, it increases productivity for your team. It gives you insight into what your customers are writing to you about. You can see this in reports and you can make better business decisions. Create a trigger for each type of request that automatically categorizes, assigns and prioritizes the ticket. I'm going to go to admin. I'm going to look for automations. I'm going to focus on the rules for ticket creation. New rule. I'm going to give it a name, order, tickets, categorization. On any of these ticket properties, I'm going to look in tickets. I'm going to look for subjects or description. I'm going to look for contains and I'm going to put order, inquiry. I have a question about my order, etc. You can add as many variations as you need and you can make this as complex as you want. Perform these actions. I'm going to say group is order group. I'm going to say priority is going to be high and I'm going to look for set type of request as order preview and save save and enable perfect it is important for you to create triaging in your system this again is to boost productivity for you and your team to eliminate human error to help your agents be more productive and to avoid tickets slipping through the cracks customer experience benefit here is again customers going to receive more value by the ticket being solved faster by the way as long as you're here please like and subscribe to this youtube channel if you like the content we'd be really grateful thank you on with the video add your company staff hours as a schedule okay i'm going to go to admin i'm going to look for business hours i'm going to add business hours i'm going to call this central europe time zone i'm going to look for berlin i'm going to set custom business hours and i'm going to go for nine to six and i'll copy all to all days then i'm going to go to holidays i'm going to add a holiday which is going to be christmas for example add Save. Why is this important to you? Well, if you set up a schedule, then you'll be able to be transparent with your customers and let them know when you're available. You'll be able to set the right expectations and people like it when they are in the loop with what's going on. Hey, we're not in the office during this time that you sent your ticket, but we'll get back to you when we are in the office. And these are our office hours. Your customers will appreciate it. And then this rule is setting up our next topic. Let's go build a trigger for out of office hours when you're not in the office. 
I'm going to go to admin. I'm going to look for automations again. In ticket creation, I'm going to create a new rule. I'm going to call it out of office notifications. And match any of these conditions. I will say in tickets, if created during business hours, I'm going to select my schedule. And perform these actions, I will choose to send a message to the requester. I will say, dear customer first name, we are out of office. I'm going to put in a description. I'm going to say, hello, thank you for writing to us. Our regular business hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 6. We are currently not in the office. When we come back, we are happy to look into your request. Kindly, amazing company. Now you can obviously use the wording that you want. I'm going to go to preview and save. Save and enable. And done. Why this is beneficial for you. You will be able to set the right expectations for your customers and they will appreciate you for it. You will also be able to tone down a little bit how customers interact with you because you've set the right expectations and they will be a little bit more calm because they know when you'll get back to them. As opposed to writing a message when they are upset and then being even more upset that nobody's getting back to them. I'm going to pause real quick and assume that you've collected all your use cases or business processes that run through the system. And it should look something like this. All right, let's keep going. Create an automation that reminds customers to get back to you for the pending tickets. I'm going to go to admin. I'm going to go to automations. I'm going to go to time triggers this time. I'm going to go to create new rule. I'm going to give this a name. Chase customers two days after being in status pending. Now in match any of the following conditions in tickets if status is pending. It can be the same for waiting on customer. I'm going to focus on pending for now. I'm going to add another condition in tickets. If hours since pending is 48 and perform these actions, I'm going to send a message to my requester in the subject. I'm going to say, dear customer, first name, we're going to make the experience personalized. We are waiting for you. And in the description, I'm going to say hi again customer first name our team wants to know if you're still interested in resolving your ticket with a ticket id kindly amazing company preview and save save and enable and you're done the benefit for you here is going to be to have increased productivity because agents don't have to necessarily chase customers by hand you'll be able to automatically do this and when customers see this they'll be able to come back to you so you can continue solving the ticket as a small best practice i'd recommend creating another automation like this and in two additional days if they don't get back to you you just solve the ticket and that's it the customer benefits because they see that you're actually interested in solving their request with you. They might have forgotten, but they're reminded that you're a serious company doing serious business. Give the customer a ticket ID. I'm going to go to admin. I'm going to go to email notifications in workflows. I'm going to go to requester notifications. I'm going to toggle on new ticket created. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to here just say your ticket ID is ticket dot id save why this is important for you well again it increases productivity and how you do that is if customer wants to add more information to the same ticket onto the same case they can just always reference this id and your agent will be able to pick up on what this is and they will just be able to add it to the same ticket thread so they don't have to have multiple tickets or they can merge them into one again this will increase your productivity and the customer benefits because they see that you are organized and they will appreciate that update agent signature i'm going to go to top right here on my profile settings i'm going to scroll down here and i'm going to say order inquiry specialist roca work save changes now if i go to my tickets and i open a ticket and i go to reply you'll see that the signature has appeared by itself now why this is beneficial it gives your customer a personalized experience they will know who they're talking to they will know somebody is involved a real person who is going to take care of them. People like to feel that they are being taken care of and somebody's watching out for them and a real person for that matter. Pause for a moment. Keep in mind that this kind of setup is going to cater to good customer experience. It will keep your customers satisfied and interested. You won't wow them. What wows customers, I'm going to share at the end of this video. Customize email template with company logo. I'm going to go to admin. I'm going to go to email notifications. Go to requester notifications. I'm going to go to new ticket created. There is something here which i don't like i'm going to go and select the logo i'll go to logos blue logo and save up and here it is at the bottom of the email i have to repeat the same process for each type of email notifications i don't have a global email template 
and this is a bit time consuming, but it is what it is. The benefits for you is the fact that you're offering the customer, again, a personalized experience. They know who they're dealing with, they see your branding, they're going to be involved, and they're going to never be confused who this message is coming from. Sometimes it does happen that customers have no idea where the messages come from if you don't offer them a personalized experience. Your branding will thank you. Next one is to create a support email address with your personalized support email. Now I'm going to go to admin, I'm going to go to channels, and I'm going to go to email. By default, I have an email created for me by the system, which contains Freshdesk in it. It's not a good practice. I'm going to add a new support email. I'm going to call this support roca work support email info at roca.work sign to group no good now my mail server can differ uh, this one is a google email and i'm just going to go sign in with google i'm going to choose the email i'm going to allow i'm going to email account is currently using info at roca.work use mail server for incoming outgoing or both i'm going to select both save now i have to verify this do some dns settings it's simpler if you own a google address this is just what we have yours can be different but no worries there's plenty of documentation on how you can do this it differs from mail server to mail server why this is beneficial for you you are offering a customized experience to your customer customers don't need to see freshdesk in the email that is communicating with them they don't even know what freshdesk is and nor should they they don't care about this they only care about good customer experience they care to get their request solved and they want to see that you are actually reaching out to them so if any weird email is going to seem like spam they're not going to like it it might be even rejected by their email server saying that it is spam so personalize it with your branding so in the email formatting you just have support at your company.com whatever it is build an SLA policy for first reply time and ticket resolution I'm going to go to admin I'm going to look for SLA I'm going to add a policy I'm going to say general SLA policy condition is going to be product is Roca work. I'm going to apply this as a general rule. Any ticket that comes into the system, I'm going to say for urgent tickets, I'm going to use one hour. I'm going to say resolution time is going to be two hours. Business hours high is going to be two hours for first reply time. Then resolution time is going to be three hours. This is zero again business hours medium this is going to be four hours i'm going to put this at eight hours and low i'm going to leave this at eight hours and this is going to be 12. i'm going to leave business hours for all i'm going to leave escalations for all and the reason why i'm doing that is because i want to remind agents when the sla is due so i'm going to go to add reminder if first response target approaches 30 minutes remind the agent that it's happening i'm going to double down and i'm going to send an escalation when the sla is violated i'm going to send this not first response time but resolution target is not met please escalate immediately i want this to be escalated to the team leader so here we go save this is important because it keeps you accountable in making sure that your customers are being taken care of. It's your commitment to them that you will actually help them. This will also keep you on your toes to be productive as well. Your customers will benefit greatly because they will get answers faster and they will be happier and they will come back to do business with you again. Also, you'll be able to see who are your top performers in the team and incentivize them. Enable customer satisfaction on all tickets. I'm going to go to admin. I'm going to go to customer satisfaction. I'm going to create a new survey. I'm going to give it a name, general survey. I'm going to ask for five points of satisfaction. This is going to be loved it. It's going to be, it was good. I am okay. I didn't like it. And this is going to be, what was that? The thank you message, I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. You customize it yourself if you want to. I'm going to send this when tickets are being put into resolve state. Save. I'm going to toggle this on. Okay, why is this beneficial? It's very good to ask feedback from your customers. You have to ask them how it went and if it was difficult to solve or if it even was solved. If you don't have a good product, this is the only way to know how you can improve it to actually still be able to do business in the future. Happy, satisfied customers are going to tell their friends and family to come to you and your bottom line will increase. Don't be afraid to ask for feedback. Any feedback is good feedback. If you action it, of course, and fix it.
If you want to wow your customers, I'm going to tell you in a bit how to do that. Enable the web widget and add it to your website. I'm going to go to the bottom here where I have chat. I'm going to go here in the settings. I'm going to go to admin settings. I'm going to go to chat channels. I'm going to go to web chat. I'm going to create a new widget. I'll call this one Roka Work. Save. Now I have here my chance to customize my widget a bit. The appearance of it, I'm going to add my logo. I'm going to leave the welcome message as it is. I'm going to change the color a bit maybe. Put it in the blue because we like blue. Yeah, this one is good. Position, I'm going to want this to be on the left, bottom left. I'm going to save this up. Now, in continuing here with the setup, I have content and I'm going to leave it as it is for now. I have the ability to add FAQs, so frequently ask questions so I can maybe take care of my customer and make them read some articles. So encourage self-service. In my preferences, I have here some browser notifications, notifications with sound, etc. And in here, I have the embed code. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to my website here. I have Squarespace in this example. This is what we use. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to go to paste the code that I copied earlier. Save this up. I'm going to go to this domain, open it up on our website and voila, here we go. Here it is. Hello there. Ask me a question. I need to chat with you. And that's it. I'm done. Okay. As a conclusion, I promised that I would tell you how to wow your customers. Well, this is depending on your niche and there are customer experience best practices for your niche. But as a general rule, you have to give your customers deep personalization. You have to have a knowledge base to encourage self-service where you answer their questions through articles that they can find themselves. You have to add a triaging, preferably an AI that triages tickets and sends them to the correct people in your team to deal with any kinds of requests and make sure that nothing slips through the cracks. You have to have a bot that is friendly and customers can use in order to encourage self-service again. You have to make it easy for your customers to reach you. Don't try to hide your contact options because that's going to make them angry. You have to be integrated with your third-party systems, preferably first one to come is integrating with your backend where you have your customer data. This will help your agents get more context on who they're talking to so they'll be able to give out better answers to the customers. You have to work with a professional that's been doing this for a long time and can set this up for you for the next 24 months so you can benefit from the customer experience best practices. If you don't feel confident to do them yourself, there is a lot to learn in this field so I know you can do it. By the way, watch the fail compilation in the next video. I think you're going to have fun with it. I hope this was useful for you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.